Do you ever feel like no matter what you say, your message doesn't get through to people, you end up feeling like you're surrounded by idiots? If so, then you found the right video. In this video, you'll learn why people don't seem to get your message clearly, and most importantly, how to get through to them. So keep watching to find out. Before we get started, here's the biggest takeaway you can get from the book. And that's that communication always happens on the listener's terms. Whenever you say something, the message is filtered through the listener's experiences, biases, and attitudes. When you can spot personality types, you can change your message to match them and get your message through clearly. Thomas Erickson, the author of the book, says there are four main personality types, red, yellow, green, and blue. But it's not just Thomas Erickson that thinks this. Hippocrates himself came up with the four humours that also specifies that there were four distinct personality types and the Aztecs also had something similar. Here's a little bit more about each personality type. The red personality type. The red personality type is often seen as ambitious, dominant, decisive, hot-tempered and competitive. They happily speak their mind and don't like the traditional way of doing things. Hippocrates called them choleric and he said their temperament was controlled by yellow bile or by their liver. He said choleric people are fiery and temperamental and sometimes frighten those around them. The Aztecs also used to refer to them as fire people and they were most often the warriors and leaders because they were explosive and hot-headed. The next group were the yellows. Thomas Erickson says yellows are optimistic, cheerful and confident with a positive, entertaining and charming personality. They see the possibility in things no matter what and they're normally great talkers and salesmen. These people were known to Hippocrates as the sanguine. He said their temperament was controlled by the excess of blood in their body. These people are happy-go-lucky optimists who spread positive vibes around them. And the Aztecs referred to them as air people, who are easygoing but also captivating and determined. Red and yellows are often seen as extroverts. They appear more confident in public settings and around other people, and they tend to implement action a lot faster than the next two colours. The next colour is green. They are often calm, balanced, easygoing, tolerant and friendly. Their motto would be keep calm and carry on. However, greens don't like conflict or to rock the boat. They're great listeners and team players though. Most people that you meet are probably greens. Hippocrates called them phlegmatic. Their temperament was influenced by the brain. He believed that phlegmatic people were just like mucus, slow and sluggish. Aztecs used to refer to them as earth people and they were workers, stable and secure. Lastly, there are blues, the pessimistic and perfectionist. They are most often seen as realists. Blues are great at analysing every situation and often make the best decisions because they look at a problem from every angle before making their decision. However, Blues don't like talking for talking's sake. Hippocrates always saw them as melancholic, whose temperament was the result of an excess black bile. Melancholy people were, to him, gloomy pessimists. And lastly, the Aztecs referred to them as water people. They were wallflowers, quiet and secure in themselves, but always observing and smart. It's important to know that the four personalities often shared common traits with each other. Blues and reds place importance on tasks and issues. Greens and yellow place importance on people and relationships. Blue and green are reserved and introverted, whereas red and yellow are extroverted and proactive. Most people have a predominant type. However, we all tend to have elements of another type as well. The first type is the real you. It's the version of yourself that comes naturally to you, but it can often be hidden depending on your situation. The second type is an adaptive mask. It's a mask you tend to wear when you're in social or formal settings. While it's important to have adaptive masks, you should try to be the real you as much as possible. This way you'll continue to attract people and circumstances you truly want into your life. How do the four personality types come across and do they mean to come across this way? As you may have guessed by now, the way a personality type comes across isn't always what they mean. Here is what each different personality is like. Reds. Reds can come across as rude, impatient and aggressive. In fact, some people might even see them as controlling and tyrannical. They'll be perceived as blunt communicators. They also have no problem with conflict because most of the time they think their way is the right way. Because of this, they often become leaders and make things happen fast. In reality though, they see themselves as ambitious, passionate and natural leaders. In fact, Reds just think there's nothing wrong with stating your opinion, not that they're being aggressive. The problem with Reds is they always think they know what's best. The common body language you can expect to see in Reds are leaning forward when communicating, sometimes coming across aggressive, using a lot of direct eye contact and a powerful handshake. You'll often spot Reds walking brazenly through crowds. They don't care who's in their way, they just expect people to move. Next up is Yellows. Yellow people often come across as overly talkative, as well as being bad listeners and easily distracted, sometimes to the point they appear superficial. They tend to dominate conversations by answering questions asked to someone else or even butting in. Some people begin to see them as egotistical and self-centered, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Yellows value people and relationships. 
It can hurt them to think that they're being seen that way. The truth is, yellows just think they should speak up whenever they have something to say. The plus side of being a yellow is that they're great communicators and public speakers, to the point of envy from other personality types. In fact, yellows make the best salesmen. The body language you can expect to see from yellows are relaxed and tactile. Their eye contact is often friendly and they smile a lot and have very expressive gestures. Yellows often come close and talk quickly and empathetically to you. After yellows come greens. Greens can sometimes be seen as resistant to change, indifferent to problems and uncaring. However, in their head, they're trying to be quite the opposite, pleasant, caring and kind. Just like yellows, one of their biggest focal points is the relationships they have with other people. Oftentimes, these same traits can make them come across as pushovers or like they're hiding something, as they can be quiet and conflict averse, as well as being naive and gullible. The language of a green is often relaxed and closed. They often tend to lean backwards, make very friendly eye contact, small gestures and less flamboyant movements. Green voices don't tend to be strong, but instead they're often soft and slow, preferring to listen instead of talk. Lastly come blue. Blue are often known as the knowables. They're very analytical and perfectionists, but because of their quiet nature, they can often come across as evasive and aloof. The truth is, blues just don't think they need to speak unless there's something worth saying. Because they're so analytical and such deep thinkers, some people also see them as uncaring and cold-hearted, when in reality, they're just happy in their own little world. Some people may view blues as slow due to the amount of time it takes them to finish a task. And while a task may take a red or yellow an hour to get through in a hurry, it'll often be incomplete and definitely imperfect. But the same mistakes will never happen when a blue finishes a task. Body language wise, blues prefer distance. Their body language tends to be closed with direct eye contact. They'll speak without gestures and often in a subdued and slow voice. So most importantly, how can you change your message to match the personality type you're talking to? Well, thankfully there are a few things you can do. First of all, let's start with red. When you're talking to reds, you want to come across as sincere, but also direct. You shouldn't worry about beating around the bush or hurting their feelings. Instead, you want to give them a clear as a message as possible so they can act on the new information. You should also make sure that you're giving red a challenge at all times because there's nothing worse for them than mundane tasks. Next up is yellows. When you're talking to yellows, the key is to make them feel heard and happy. Make sure you're telling a joke or two as well as laughing at theirs. But most importantly, you want to stay organized. You should write an agenda for what you need to talk to them about. So if they start to stray off topic, you can guide them back. You definitely don't want to isolate yellows or surround them with negative energy. Instead, you should place them into an environment where they can talk to lots of people and let their energetic and talkative side shine. This is one of the reasons why yellows make great salesmen. When you're talking to a green, you need to make sure that they don't feel under pressure or like everyone is watching them. To convey your message best to greens, it is best to keep the spotlight off them, which they hate. This goes for both praise and criticism. Unfortunately, greens have a fragile ego, so you also have to make sure they know nothing is personal. As well as this, greens like the status quo, so don't throw new things at them or change plans suddenly as this will really clash with their personality. And lastly, blues. The key to talking to a blue is to make sure you have all the facts ready beforehand. Without all the facts and details, a blue will have a hard time taking you seriously. While you may think a blue is attacking you when they're bombarding you with questions, in reality, they're just trying to understand the situation as best they can, even if they don't technically need all the details. Lastly, what colors are best and worst together? You may have guessed by now that some colors don't really go together as well as others. Here are the best and worst colors you can stick together. Combining red and yellow or green and blue are typically the go-to choices. Red and yellows are both extroverted, energetic and full of enthusiasm, which means that they will bounce off each other. Likewise, greens and blues are both introverted, which means they'll feel secure with one another. However, that doesn't mean they are the only choices. Red and blues can also work well together, as both of these colours are task focused and they'll get a lot of work done. The reds will tend to lead an activity, while the blues make sure all the finer details aren't forgotten. Along the same vein, yellows and greens go together well too. Greens are natural listeners, whereas yellows are natural talkers. This creates the perfect balance. However, there are also some combinations that you should definitely avoid putting together. Reds and greens, for example, don't get along too well. The passivity and relaxation of green frustrates reds, and the reds' traits of changing plans and constantly moving goalposts to get a task done can frustrate greens. But the worst combination of all has to be blues and yellows. While all the other combinations can work to some extent, blues and yellows definitely don't get along. While blues are often quiet and like to focus on the task at hand and all its minute details, yellows will rush in, blaze through projects without giving any thought to the smaller details and will do so in an extremely talkative manner which a blue will absolutely hate. As you can see, there's a lot to figure out when it comes to what each person's personality type is, but if you follow the advice in this video, you'll be able to figure it out in no time. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you've figured out your personality type make sure to leave it in the comments below. Otherwise have a great day.